spoilers for many currently running romance manga, including Please Go Home Akutsu-san, Nagatoro, My Dress Up Darling, Now That We Draw, The Fragrant Flower Blooms With Dignity, and You Talk Too Much So Just Shut It Already. You have been warned. And yes, I know that a new chapter of My Dress Up Darling suddenly dropped, but I'm going to wait until chapter 106 comes out so that I can talk about both of them. So fans of those videos will have to wait a couple weeks. Let's get back to what we love to talk about on this channel. Romance. Specifically confessions. I know we haven't gotten one yet in My Dress Up Darling, but we finally did in another manga, Akutsu-san. And with Nagatora wrapping up soon, I feel like we're coming to the end of an era. An era that will probably get parodied, but will hopefully bring about something new. What could that be? Who knows? Welcome once again to Musings by Danan. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Danan. I'm currently reading over 600 manga and light novels, and my two favorite genres are fantasy and romance. So on this channel, we talk a lot about both of those genres. But we tend to look more into story structure and tropes rather than how cool the fight scenes are or how great the animation or artwork is. Which brings me to the subject of today's video, confessions. Also, and I know it's annoying to keep hearing this, but statistically, if I don't ask you to like and subscribe, the video gets fewer subscribers. Romance is something that we, as humans, crave. Whether it's a sappy love story or something hot and heavy, seeing people fall in love brings us joy. It also brings hope to the many lonely weebs out there. A friend of mine, who is a fellow content creator, longed to find that kind of love, and finally found it with a childhood friend. Go figure. All of the complaints I'm hearing about my dress-up darling recently boil down to one thing. Hurry up and confess already. But you don't want a confession to happen too soon. You need to let it build. Confessions that happen too early leave you wondering where the rest of the series will go. On the flip side, confessions that happen late and then the series either ends abruptly or doesn't go anywhere afterwards leave you frustrated. Looking at you, Rena girlfriend, I know that your author doesn't want to let you date anyone but himself, but she's just a rental, I mean character. It's not like she's a real girlfriend. But if you want some real anime merch for real cheap, you should check out today's sponsor, Timu. I'm sure you've already heard of Timu, but maybe you haven't ordered from them yet. If not, don't worry, they are not as bad as Wish.com. I've ordered plenty of things from them over the last few years and haven't had a bad experience. If you're wanting unique products for very cheap and to help support this channel, click the link down below. Yes, they even have anime figures. But we're not here today to talk about anime figures, we're here today to talk about confessions. Whether or not the characters are real and on our shelves or just live in our hearts, our feelings for them and the experiences they create are real. In my experience, and I've read or am currently reading over 200 romance manga, confessions can be split into one of three categories. You have initial, expected, and surprise. Let's talk about each of those and why they're all great in their own right. Sometimes you get a manga where the confession happens at the beginning or near the beginning of the story. Now, I'm not talking about scenes like when Marin suggested to Gojo that they start dating. Joke confessions don't count. But a manga that does fit this example is You and I Are Polar Opposites. Our adorable couple confesses their feelings and start dating in the first chapter. The rest of the series is about how being in a relationship changes you as a person and how their friend group evolves around the new couple. Another example would be An Introvert's Hookup Hiccups, This Gyaru is Head Over Heels For Me. This light novel series is about a girl who, as a punishment game, is forced to confess to a boy in class and date him for 30 days. Unfortunately, he overhears her. When he asks his guildmates in the online game he plays for advice, they suggest accepting her confession and dating the girl as a trial run. It'll only be for a month, and he'll get some valuable experience. The enjoyable part about a series where the confession happens at the beginning is you get to follow the two main characters on their journey of discovering more about their partner. And in so doing, they discover more about themselves. Sure, challenges arise just like they do in real relationships, but without those challenges, you wouldn't have a story. I suppose I should explain that. It'll come in useful later on. Stories cannot exist without conflict. Little Red Riding Hood went to her grandma's house to bring her goodies is not a story. It's a sentence. Without the wolf, there is no story. Conflict is the single most important aspect of storytelling. Now, the conflict doesn't have to be a physical confrontation. 
and it doesn't have to be a conflict between people. Amazing and highly tense storytelling can happen when the character is overcoming themselves. A great example of this is The Fragrant Flower Blooms with Dignity. The tension in this series is palpable, and at times, you feel like you're reading a psychological manga. All of the kids in this series are dealing with the stresses that come with growing up. Dealing with change, figuring out your goals in life, reconciling with your past self so you can grow as a person. In fact, talking about this series brings me to my next topic, surprise confessions. Sometimes, a confession happens out of nowhere. And while the fragrant flower blooms with dignity has surpassed the 100 chapter mark, the initial confession happened in chapter 35. And it kind of came out of nowhere. Rintaro realized how much joy he felt whenever he was with Waguri and just blurted it out. Now, while this confession did happen near the beginning of the manga, I have to say that this was more of a surprise confession than anything else. There weren't chapters spent agonizing over the decision and trying to set the perfect scene like in Komi Can't Communicate. But Akutsu-san also had a surprise confession. Here we are, over 170 chapters into the manga. We know both of them are in love with each other. They've had numerous opportunities to confess their feelings. But Akutsu is too much of a tsundere to speak her mind, and Uyama is too much of a coward. Well, who can blame him? Akutsu has a tendency to beat him up. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Uyama blurts out that he's in love with her. Allow me to set the scene for you. If you're still watching this video, either you've read the series or you don't mind spoilers. Akutsu overhears that Uyama's parents want him to move back home, and he agrees. She starts panicking. If he moves back home, she won't be able to see him as much. Are they just going to go their separate ways? She has to ask him. Of course, as a tsundere, she can't get the words out. She's too scared to ask. Even when she grabs him, Akutsu can't get the words out. How hard can it be to say that she's in love with him? She's finally able to ask about him giving up the apartment, though. Tears in her eyes, she begs him not to go. Some top-tier blushing on this panel. You see, his parents told him that if he wanted to go to college, they could only afford to pay for him if he moved back home. At first he agreed, but then he told them he'd just get a job to help ease their financial burdens. Of course, Akutsu is incredibly embarrassed, and the blushing intensifies. Uyama goes on to explain that he doesn't want to give up his apartment, because then he wouldn't get to see her anymore, and he's in love with her. Even better than Akutsu's reaction and her eventual response is Uya's reaction. The landlord's daughter is a huge fan of rom-com, and she's been living for developments in Akutsu's and Uyama's relationship. After feeling strong rom-com vibes from the apartment, she comes upstairs and happens to overhear Akutsu agree to go out with him. And this was the result. Honestly, I had the same reaction. Even though we're almost 180 chapters into the series, the confession still seemed sudden. But that's the fun part about these types of confessions. It seems like the tension will continue to build with no end in sight. Our couple will never get together. They're both too scared to say anything and then BAM, they're married. Or at least boyfriend and girlfriend, even if they're still too embarrassed to say it out loud. But what about the final type? The ones where you see the confession coming from a mile away, like in Nagatoro. The most common type of confession that you see in romance manga are the expected ones. The ones you know are coming. Eventually. Maybe five chapters after someone decides to confess, maybe 50. In the case of Komi, it was about 130 between the stairwell where Komi first confirmed her feelings for Tadno to Monbagi, and the chapter where Tadno finally confessed. Then again, Komi Can't Communicate is a slice-of-life comedy series with a bit of romance. Romance isn't the focus, so we can forgive the series for taking that long. But Nagatoro and Kubo both had some solid lead-ups to their respective confessions. And that tension, the waiting for the final release, though painful at the time, is what drives us to read romance series. Release doesn't have to be sexual, it can be emotional. And that tension is what we're feeling right now in My Dress Up Darling but try to savor it. That buildup is why we read romance. And if it comes too soon or comes at the wrong time, it can be a bit embarrassing if you know what I mean. I've mentioned this on the channel before, but romance series can basically be divided into three categories. Confession at the beginning, confession as the conclusion, and confession in the middle, which is the rarest of all. 
If the confession happens at the beginning, our couple is already in love, they already realize their feelings, so the story winds up being about our couple overcoming challenges together. If the confession happens at the end, the tension in the story comes from our couple realizing their feelings for each other and trying to suss out how the other person is feeling, like in, you talk too much, so just shut it already. Our main girl has finally figured out her feelings, as has our main boy. The most recent chapter ended with them both deciding to tell each other as quickly as possible. So we're probably getting a confession in the next chapter or two. Question is, what happens afterwards? In Kuba Won't Let Me Be Invisible, the confession happened in the last chapter. Nagataro is ending soon, but the confession barely happened a few chapters ago. Yanchigal no Anjo-san has been going strong after the confession. But about half the chapters after Seito and Anjo started dating have been focused on Toyota and Inuyama. The third type of manga, which I feel is the rarest, is the one where the confession happens in the middle of the story. I love these because you both get the build-up and a satisfying conclusion. Probably the best example of an ongoing series that does this is Hitomi-chan is Shy with Strangers. We're over 120 chapters in and the confessions happened back in the 60s. You could argue that this series is more slice of life, but the focus has been almost entirely on the relationship between Hitomi and Osami. Unlike Komi, where the focus is on Komi making 100 friends. The problem is, you never know if a series will be one that ends with the confession, or if the confession happens in the middle, if you're just reading it while it's being published. Who knows if this is going to be a series with 50 chapters, or 150. At the end of the day, we're just along for the ride rooting for our protagonists to find the happiness they deserve. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my to Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, she can be reached at cutestuff.edits at gmail.com. Link is down below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Damon. There are several tiers to choose from. You can pick an anime or manga for me to do a video about, or you can join our monthly manga club. I also want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Waffles, Jiraiya, Danny, Muffins, Marcus, Brett, Roxy, Sean, Mark, Borgie, Nazwin, Midge, Alex, Alex, Conga, Aaron, Chris, Robert, Michael, Skinwalker, Austin, William, Dan, Pi, Dead Segway, Turner, Triz, and Scott. You guys are awesome. I post anime or manga videos often, or you can click here to watch additional videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Musings by Danon.